couple of years ago, my husband and I ventured into poultry farming in Ghana. We built simple structures, filled it with day old chicks, and grew the farm to 8,000 birds. Three years down the line, we are expanding. We are building a 250,000 bird capacity poultry farm, and this is where the journey begins. Hi, my name is Koriwa. About two years ago, my husband and I flew down from Australia to Ghana to purchase farmland for the purposes of expanding our layer poultry farm. The plan is to build a modern automated poultry farm. And now that I have relocated to Ghana and I've had some time to settle in a bit, it is time to get to work on building our new poultry farm at our new location. So I will be documenting the journey and progress and sharing it with you here on YouTube. So if this kind of info interests you, kindly like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. In today's video, I'm sharing with you what we did to get our land ready for the beginning of our new poultry farming project. We have been tackling the background work on this project for about a year and a half now. So our farmland has been purchased, our proposed farm layout has been professionally designed, almost all government permits have been applied for, so we are good to go. We visited our site a couple of weeks ago with some of the contractors who will be working the land to formulate our action plan. After negotiating final prices, a date was set and it was all systems go. On day one, we met up very early with the bulldozer operators to go to the site to start clearing the land. Hi. Because of the size of the land and because we wanted the land cleared in a single day, we contracted two bulldozers to clear the land. Our land is not immediately accessible from the main road, so it was part of our plan to have the bulldozers create a road network that we could drive through to get to our farm. But very quickly, it became obvious that the nature of the soil on the land, which is it is extremely clayey, it would be very difficult to have heavy vehicles plying the route, which means that we needed to construct a proper road from the main road to our land and beyond. To do this, we were advised to get the bulldozers to create the path and then fill the road with construction gravel and then get a grader to come and level it so that the clay soil is trapped underneath the gravels, making it easier for vehicles to ply the route and to prevent the road from getting weedy again. So after the land was all leveled, we set to work planning how to get the road network from the main road to the farm constructed as well as the road network within our farm done, killing two birds with one stone. After which we bought some wooden pegs and some ropes to, to measure and lay out where all the roads were supposed to go. So we lined and we pegged and we lined and we pegged and there was some more lining and pegging until all of the road networks was fully mapped out. We were advised to purchase 100 track loads of gravel sand to construct the proposed roads. Each track load was going to cost 450 Ghana cities to purchase. So we decided to go and see the chiefs of the town to rent to us a land from which we could to win the gravels ourselves to save a bit of money. So that is what we did. After a lot of negotiations with the chief, we inspected a suitable site, paid for the rented land, contracted four tipper trucks, one payloader machine, a grader, and a gentleman with a sand winning license. And then we were good to go. This is what the gravel looks like.
the payloader machines dug up the gravel from the rented site and filled up the tipper trucks to the brim. All this was done under the supervision of the gentleman with the winning license. Unfortunately, I don't know what their professional name is, but yeah, gentleman with the winning license. The tipper trucks then drove to our farm site nearby and emptied their filled trucks onto the demarcated road network. We ended up using 110 trips of gravel sand for this part of the project. So day two came and it was time to construct the road network. The grader was on site to tackle this part of the project which is the leveling and mapping out of the feeder road that we were creating. We also needed to install some covert in the in flat prone areas within the site. After the grader worked its magic, we had a good looking feeder road leading from the main road down to our farm site and beyond. And things were getting really exciting at this stage. So it was time to get to work and begin to construct the inner roads within the farm. From here, 29.5, then the road comes. Yes. And I'm from here, no? Uh, 60, oh, 60, 61. Uh, uh, 61. The grader got to work again, and very soon the inner road networks were created and the rest of the land completely leveled. Having done all this work, phase one of the poultry expansion project is now done and we can actually move on to start putting structures on our land. It was a lot of work done with a lot accomplished. Considering that we started from here, To hear, I'm very happy with the progress that we made. As the construction goes on, green grass will be replanted in places where green grass needs to be planted. Tarring will go over graveled roads and structures would go where structures need to go. But, but for starters, we've got the foundation level done and so the exciting work is yet to begin rewarding as this project was to do there were a lot of headaches and frustrations throughout the period from starting and stopping from extra monies needing to be paid from aggrieved family members the list goes on and on but at the end of the day when all was said and done it felt really good driving down this newly constructed feeder road and knowing that a lot had been achieved let me know in the comment section below what you think about progress so far and, and this project in general a lot more is coming your way very soon so do like this video and subscribe and i will see you in the next video